What's up, everybody? It's the Gooseman Gaming Group here with another podcast. Gooseman uh, Takes on Gaming. Jesus, I'm sorry. I keep forgetting the new name. God. Gooseman Takes on Gaming, which is a podcast from the Gooseman Gaming Group. Today, yes. we're going to be talking about single player investments uh, in single player games versus multiplayer games with loot boxes, DLC, and more of paying for the service in a game rather than just paying for the game out right out of the box. So um, so today, as always, we have Proto and Ruse with you. Uh, yep. If you guys haven't listened to our other two podcasts, feel free to uh, jump back, listen to those ones, talk about some good stuff, talk about what gets us into gaming and a lot of the fun memories, which I'm sure that conversation will come up again in the future. There's a oh, lot of fun it's going to be a to recurring about. theme. <laughs> a lot of fun stuff to talk about and the new Black Ops 4. Um, so if you guys like that stuff, take, definitely hit the subscribe button if you want some more gaming, uh, some more gaming videos. Just a bunch of uh, f- friends who like to play games together. Just some Simple guys stuff. who love gaming and want to share it. You know, that's what everybody yeah. is. We all love gaming. Yeah, sim- just simple as that. Yeah. Um, so let's 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 jump right in here. Let's talk about you know in recent history, you know, the last you know years for years now, we're seeing that a lot of microtransactions, a lot of loot boxes, a lot of DLC into these games where you get into a point where you feel like the game itself isn't necessarily complete without right yeah at at launch the biggest one for me thinking about is i remember uh battle the brand new battlefront not battlefront 2 the brand new battlefront um when they star wars series yeah star wars Battlefront. yes exactly you know i bought the game had it was a fun game i mean it's a beautiful looking game it was fun but I remember being like, man, I, you know, I gotta pay fifteen dollars just to just to fucking do the Death Star. This yeah. is Star Wars. Well, the Death Star should not be locked behind fifteen dollars. Yeah. And you know, and then recently, most recently, we're seeing that how single player games, which you know, we feel that we're not getting a ton of really truly great single player experiences, purely single player. But we're seeing that God of War did amazing as a single player. You know, we will say yes, that costs more money to make. You know the voice acting, the the capture, you know the, the face captures, everything that goes into making a truly cinematic, beautiful first person, not first person, uh, single player experience. But man, has that game sold well? So a game is blowing expectations out of the water. I'm not familiar with God of War at all. Is it straight up? What what is it similar to like The Witcher or Skyrim that kind of deal? Nah. So so they did add some RPG elements into this latest iteration, but um. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, God of War was originally the PlayStation Two. Started on the PlayStation Two with the main character of Kratos. He um, be, he takes on basically all of the guy. <laughs> you could go into a, you could do a whole podcast just on the story of that. But in a nutshell, um, in a nutshell, you basically throughout the first three games, you take on every all the gods of Olympus oh. for, to take revenge on them, okay. and you k- pretty much kill them all. Of course, and and it's gory, and it's fun. It's just a truly great. Uh, it's they were those really great games. They were a lot of fun. Um, I remember, you know, I've I've um, big, one of the biggest ones that come to mind for me was God of War Two. That one was just so much fun uh, to me. I really enjoyed playing that one. Um, but this recent one, we see we see the main character Kratos. He actually we're going into more of the Norse uh, Norse uh, mythology. So okay. like, you know, Thor, Odin, Switching Loki, it up a little all bit. That. Yeah, and um, you know he has a son now. He's much older, and he's trying to like hide his past from his son, and because he is like because Kratos is a god, and but I have, I have a friend who played through the entire thing. I have not yet played through it, but I've seen enough of it to be like, wow, look at this game. This game is just it. it, it it's storytelling, the graphics, you know, everything about it is is really really great. It's but- hard to. Compared to something else, it's not like a traditional RPG, but it has RPG elements. But it's it. a fully comprehensive, no DLCs, no add-ons, no nothing like that. Um. So I'm sure there might be a DLC for it later, but you do not need the DLC to to play it. And to I'm, it fully like, experience to, to, it. To fully experience it, like yeah. the DLC will just be like an add-on, but the base game, sixty dollars out of the box. Will keep will satisfy you beyond measure. Okay. Where you know, obviously, we're seeing comparisons to other games where it's like, 
we're not seeing that. Where it's like it feels like a game is, you know, Destiny. When Destiny came out, that the base game felt incomplete, and you had to get all the, you know, they had to, you had to buy DLC to, um, um, you had to buy DLC to even to even get things out of that game that should have been in the base game. And Destiny 2 seemed to run into that a bit as well, where it's fine adding DLC, but your base $60 game needs to be complete. It mm-hmm. does. It needs yeah. to feel gratifying for the player. Um, <laughs> otherwise, don't charge $60 for it. Right. And that's kind of what we're seeing. So probably you know, a big thing you know, for, from, you know, from the, so the relaunch of the Battlefront, um, and then like Battlefront 2 having its progression system really really invested in loot boxes. It's like I as a you know, I as a casual player, if I, you know, was a casual player of that game, can't step on to the bat that battlefield and that play. And like someone who decided to spend an extra hundred dollars in me or twenty dollars or whatever it is, has a higher chance of getting better stuff much earlier on and just destroying me. There's so many videos on YouTube being like, here's a normal stormtrooper versus like a one with all the best cards. Mm-hmm. Wrecks. It's not even fun. Yeah, they've changed it, and EA took a huge hit. Yeah. I mean, they lost a couple billion dollars, and that investors noticed, their stocks noticed, and that's huge. And and we're seeing that, you know, these loot boxes, especially with loot boxes, a lot of people are, in, a lot of uh, entities are starting to invest. Like, is this gambling? You know, I think well, uh, Hawaii, bit. Washington State are like, is this gambling? And like, China has made it so you need to release the the drop rates of items so we look at blizzard who has like loot boxes in overwatch granted in overwatch it's just cosmetics and i actually personally don't have a problem with loot boxes as long as they are cosmetic yeah because you know as long as because if a guy has a pretty pretty character versus my like normal character because i'm not spending money on fucking clothing in a game no way um you know but as long as the core gameplay is not altered and i still can compete against that person I don't care. Right. Like, you're, even you're, the, in, you're still competitive. You're not mm-hmm, giving an exactly. unfair advantage based off no, a, run, a random number generator. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, like, even like, so with Blizzard, with Hearthstone, who sells like digital packs of cards, which are needed to play, um, they had to release just what are the drop rates? Like, what's your percentage of getting, you know, a, a legendary, a rare, um, a heroic, you know, things like that. So, you know, we've played a lot of games over the past, over our lifetime, and multiplayer games, single player games. But I definitely feel that we are lacking—not lacking, but are in need of 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 industries to really of, of companies to really invest in a truly great single player game. Multiplayer isn't—I understand the money behind loot boxes. Yeah. Like the microtransactions make these companies so much fucking money it's ridiculous how much money i think fortnite made like fortnite like in like a month made like 100 million oh. like, there's so much money and you see these coming games... in i understand from a business why they do it because they need to make money it keeps them going and i get that you i mean you see these games they are free some of these games are free to play uh <laughs> one of the games i play regularly on the pc is world warships free to play didn't pay a cent to buy the game and play, or to install the game and play it, but you know, you see this with all these other games, Call of Duty, Battlefield, uh, Battlefront, Star Wars, uh, even a lot of the games on your phone. Uh, mm. Clash of Clans, right? You pay real mm. money to get these certain certain advantages. That, mm. I and you didn't see this at all with Nintendo 64, Super Nintendo, you know, part of its evolution of gaming, and it's been around for yeah, a while, it was have. new, but you didn't, you didn't have, have the, the internet. Yep, yeah, right. Yes, online played a huge part in that. But I, I personally feel this is going to be a trend. <laughs> if it's a model that's going to continue to make money, it probably is around to stay. Oh yeah, I mean it's it's going to stay. I think though that we're going to. I think uh, fortunately, a God of War proved. I think you, you know, reading up on it, like God of War sold three point one million units in three days. Mm-hmm. Let alone that's the first few days. It's been out for a little, been out for like a month or so now. So it's like that. Fa- I mean, you know, sixty dollars a title, like that's a lot of money. Yeah, that's a lot of money in a few days. And now that all the reviews are out, you can you imagine how many it sold 
till now. It's just, um, it's, 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 it's incredible. And, you know, yes, microtransactions do make companies money, but I think what happened with Battlefront 2 and EA is severely going to put a stop to it because it hurt them in a big way. Well, yes, it's not, it's not something that's going to crash the company, but then that was a backlash I, of like, this is too far. So I was doing a little bit of reading on Battlefront and, uh, cause I was actually, I was just fiddling around, but what game am I going to pick up? And I looked at Battlefront 2. And I think a lot of the controversy came from what you were talking about earlier was the random sort of progression that stemmed from these loot boxes and, and getting these weapons and uh, abilities, right? <laughs> Versus a level ranking system sort in Call of Duty or you can prestige and just progress in a linear fashion. So mm -hmm. it sounds like they fixed that. So the, the, Nate, the specific kind of nuance of that system has been fixed and remedied but the overall kind of if you want to progress more and have more advantages you have to pay into it i don't think that's kind of changed mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah it it um yeah it you can pay into it for the cosmetics they did change it um Got my train of thought. Yeah, so I think it's something that definitely is going to, it's something that's definitely going to continue. And again, with the cosmetics, it's fine. Um, but I think another thing that, the other thing I, I was going to mention with the single player is that, like, look at like Nintendo, Nintendo Switch. Yeah. And I think one of the reasons that Nintendo Switch A is so freaking popular is, is Zelda and Mario Odyssey, which are two single player games that just blew people's expectations out of the water. And people bought that system for those games. Yep. You know, like even for me, I'm like, man, that Zelda game looks really great. I would love to play that. I might buy a Switch. Even with the God of War, it's like, man, God of War. So I buy, buy a PlayStation 4 just to play that game. Yep. You know, and that has power in it. You don't need to, you don't need to do the multiplayer. You don't need to do all that because not everyone needs. You know, sometimes people like they hammer in multiplayer. Look, let's look at Doom. Doom uh, 2016. Great single player. Multiplayer was like whatever. Like, okay, fine. It's right. Like, it's basically like Halo with demons. It's like, you don't need that. Just make a great single player game. You don't need it was a great single player game, don't get me wrong, but like the multiplayer was kind of just put in there. Just thrown in because really. it was an expectation to have sort of thing. Yeah, it was nothing really like wow. Or yeah. Like, yeah, I'm gonna play this. It's like, okay, that's in there, but I'm here to play story of story the action of Doom. And maybe not even the story so much, but that game is just so much fun to play. You know, and they stuck to their roots with like being not so cinematic. You know, they they we Doom ran into they were gonna make Doom four, and it was turning out like Call of Duty. And so they they, they scrapped it. They they went back like we're rebooting basically, and they did a great job <laughs> bringing that franchise back. So you know, with something like Doom, Doom was you know huge. Back in the day, you know, original Doom, how popular it was. Yeah, yeah. I um, it, it's uh, I haven't played much of Doom, but I mean, I think that's a franchise around to stay, and they have their own certain niche and feel that gamers like about the series, and holding true to that is very important. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Gotta definitely have to stick to that. It um. You know, rumor is that at E3 coming up, you know, Doom 2 is going to come because of uh, Bethesda, you know, made a, they made a comment of being like, oh, well, yeah, it's going to be, you know, it's, you know, we're getting ready for E3. It's been hell on earth. It was That was the original <laughs> title of Doom 2. Yeah. So rumor has it it's coming. I hope it's coming. I'm static out of my mind if it is coming. Um, um, but yeah, I, I do worry about where, you know, where we're going to go with, with gaming because it just, I'm not big into the season passes either. It's yeah, not. yeah. It's just, I've it's never just... bought a season pass, either though I play Call of Duty a lot. Um, probably my most played first-person shooter, Call of Duty. I've never bought a season pass. I don't think I will, only because I'm frugal in nature. I can't imagine people who buy every season pass, every Call of Duty. <laughs> That's adding, what, how much is a season pass? $10, $15? No, dude, sixty bucks. Sixty dollars for a season pass? 
Yeah. So you're paying sixty dollars for Call of Duty plus another sixty dollars just to, to get all the DLC. To, well, is it, and it's discounted DLC, right? It's not even free DLC. So normally it's like I think it's like fifteen. I, th- I think so. I think a season pass might be like fifty bucks, but if you buy them, if you buy each map pack, normally it's like fifteen. So it saves you ten dollars in the long end. My biggest thing is why I don't do it is because I don't always because when new Call of Duty comes out, yeah, we play it a ton. But as the as the year goes on, we start playing new things and we yeah. don't play Call of Duty as much. It like it does shift, and I'm like, I don't want if I, if I want if we're really into it, I want that map pack. Yes. Okay, yeah. I'll buy it. Rather than spending fifty and be like, oh well, I never really got to play a lot of these. And the other thing with like, it's tough for me in in the Call of Duty thing with the map packs is that like, they're coming out with like a couple multiplayer maps, a new, especially with World War Two. It's like, oh, I don't really play the war, the war mode, which is like basically said very similar to like Battlefield operations. Yep. I don't play that mode a ton. Um. So it's like, oh, you get a new war uh, a war mode. And I'm like, well, I don't play that. And I, really get, okay, I get it. like a couple a couple new multiplayer maps, and there's a whole new zombies thing. I'm like, I don't really do a lot of the zombies yeah. you know it's it's never you know we've played zombies before but it's not something that we are you know we'll play it for fun with like the maps that it comes with but it's not something that i'm like looking to play each one as it comes out yeah right yeah i would be you interested know? to kind of get the numbers as to how many people like say you sold a million copies of call of duty mm-hmm. what percentage of that million translates to season pass buyers as well right mm-hmm. is it 50 percent, 20 percent, 10 percent? i have no idea i'd be interested yeah. to get those numbers that'd be really good to know i would love to see very similar like what what that is um i would love to see what that is i really would um well, and maybe to see the change over games too like uh i don't know when they started implementing this but from the first call of duty to now is that percentage going up? Is it going down? If it's going up, then something like that's gonna stay for sure. Because it's <laughs> proof that well, season passes, but they're doing, even doing season passes, somewhat single player games, like you know that don't have a multiplayer component but do have additional DLC. Looking at like you know the Tomb Raider games, the Batman games, uh, the most recent Assassin's Creed, Assassin's Creed Origins came out with a season pass because they were gonna release other chapters. That weren't part of the main story were basically just like side missions, yeah. side things to do with their own storyline. Some of them look pretty cool. I mean, we get dis- I mean, I see discounts on them on the Xbox store all the time. Like, you know, the Jack the Ripper one for Syndicate um, is um, like five bucks here and there sometimes. You know, I'm like, okay, cool. But like, I just, those, those games, like, there's, I also feel like there's so many to play. It's like, uh, so here's, I'm just not going to have time to play all this. <laughs> here's, here's my question to you. Think about pre DLC era and post DLC era. Do you like DLCs and the general idea of it? I I like the idea of it as long as it adds to the game. You know, I I kind of like when games you know, and also looking at like when games also are sending are setting up like free uh, like free updates. I think with like Rainbow Six Siege, they're consistently releasing content that people aren't having to pay for. Yep. Um, even even looking into like Fortnite, like Fortnite is free to play. Yeah, there's a microtransaction, but like they're just consistently giving out content, new content. Like you don't have to pay for it. You know, with like Thanos, the Thanos mode, I don't need to pay to play that. I can just go in and play. Um, you know, I loved the twenty versus twenty versus twenty versus twenty versus twenty mode. That was so much fun. But again, you don't have to pay to get that content. Um, and I think sometimes the content, I think sometimes DLC can be a huge add-on. It can be a huge um, bonus. Like, look at like you know we're looking at like The Witcher Three, um, like the the expansions for that. Not only was the base game great, but the expansions for it were were you know added to. It. They just made it was just even better. Like, and that I think is fine. I think when the game requires DLC to fix the base game, that's when we have the problem. Looking at a game like Destiny, where it's like we're getting expansions for it, but the core experience at itself with the core game is flawed. Interesting. You know, I will never play. I, I probably will not play just because I played Destiny One. Uh, your brother and I, played somebody else, and then I know he fell out of it because his a bunch of stuff got wiped, and he's like, I don't want to do this again. I don't want to go through all that work again. So we ended up stopped playing because those are get that's a game that really relies on being social. Yep. You know, that game you need to be in a social state for that game. And I actually had a, a coworker. Um, he and I were going to play Destiny 2 together. We played a little bit together, and then 
just time got in the way, you know, time got in the way, things got in the way, and I'm like, this game by myself is not that much, you know, so there were some things in the beginning that were really fun, but it just, it didn't have enough to, you know, it didn't have enough to keep, you know, coming back until, you know, until then, you get, until then the DLC come out, like, ah, oh, fresh stuff, but I had so much fun with the core, yeah. you're kind of waiting for the DLC to be like, maybe it'll finally be fun. That's not where, that's not where DLC oh. should be. I guess it provides an opportunity for people who are more invested to stay invested, whereas people's interests are waning. Mm-hmm. Um, then you know they can choose to not opt in the DLC versus say if theoretically all the DLC and the game came in at once and the price tag was a hundred dollars, right? But you would only play a fraction of that. Mm-hmm. May not be worth it for the casual player. So mm-hmm. I, I mean. I, I I like DLCs. I like the variability that it gives, and to provide a new kind of rejuvenated interest in the game. But I don't. I, I have a problem when the prices are almost comparable to the original game itself. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's that only really happens when like this passes. And again, but you have to just make any of those DLCs are going to be good. And I'm fine with the DLC as long as the, my core game though is good. I buy a core game for sixty dollars. It feels incomplete, and yeah. you feel as though you have to wait for a DLC to make it better. You know, is just like that's that's when you have now. a problem with it. Yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. Yeah, that's when I'm just like, I don't, I don't think so. I don't feel that. I think that, you know, I think a Destiny a lot. Where like, it's like, oh, if this doesn't fix the game, though. It's like, yeah, it's fine, but it doesn't fix the game. It's like, well, if your game's broken from the beginning. Where yeah. we, you know, again, we're like, yeah, God, I mean, if someone, if they release another story with God of War as a DLC, like, but the core game is so much fun. Then you get like, it. Okay, fine. Okay, cool. But yeah, the season, people try to sell you on the season pass. Same thing with like pre-ordering bonuses. I feel like the pre-order bonuses and like deluxe editions, you know, are also like, oh, I'm going to pay 15 extra dollars and I get some skins. or Yeah, no, I've never bought into That's that. That's not worth $15 yeah. to me. Yeah. Maybe I value them my, my, my money a little bit too much. Everybody yeah. has their own taste. Maybe people always get that, <laughs> and they enjoy that, and that's perfect for them. Fine, but I don't know. It's just not yeah. for me. Well, it's one of those things where it's like, you know, especially looking back to the World of Warcraft days where it's like, oh, you can, you know, if you pre-order or you get the deluxe edition, you get this mount. And I'm like, okay, that mount probably gets you from point A to point B as fast as my standard mount. You may, oh, maybe you go a little bit faster. Oh, okay, whatever. I'm not that invested in it to be like, oh, right. my God. Yeah, you know, I agree. Yep. You know, so do you think DLCs oh. are around to stay? They'll be, they'll, they're definitely around to stay. Um, they'll be around to stay as long as people are buying them. You know, same thing with microtransactions. As much as people hate them, they'll be, they'll be here as long as, as long as they're making money, they will stay. They, they, like that's the thing. Like you know, gaming is such a big industry, and it's run, it's not, it's run by people who are businessmen, businessmen and women yep. who are like, yeah. I, these people may hate it, but it brought me a hundred million dollars last month. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, so, clearly you. Like, that, and that that's why like when it changed because like looking at EA, they changed the system because it hurt the company. They lost a ton of money. It affected their wallets. Yeah. It, if that's the biggest way to make the change, is Man, they have money to affect talks. the wallet. Yeah. Because <laughs> you know we're seeing and the thing is that we're seeing all these independent studios. You know, these uh, EA is buying up studios left and right. You know. And they're, you know, EA is notorious for closing those studios. They're running it like a business, and it, but like gaming is a huge business. It is. It's 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 enormous. Yeah. And as long as it makes them money, they're not going to change it. So you can people, gamers can boo. You know, you can boo who all you want, but like you know, it's but as long as they're you're giving them their the money, it doesn't matter. So what do you think the natural progression <laughs> is from here? Because you had games. So I think they're going to see DLCs. is that people. A, don't lock your game behind small payments for microtransactions. Just very recently, uh, the Harry Potter, Harry Potter mobile game released. And uh, my girlfriend loves Harry Potter, downloaded it, was super excited. Kind of an RPG-ish, ish, very lightly, very lightly RPG-ish, but like a story sure. that wasn't centered around Harry. It's like, kind of like you are the character. And, and it is just pounded with microtransactions left and right yeah. to the point where the backlash was so bad they had to change their pricing model but the backlash is still really bad yeah so i think again if you're able to hurt their wallet you will see change yeah 
but I think we'll see that with this backlash, they will go into it with us with being like, okay, we have this for the people who want it, but it doesn't restrict the game. Look at caught like looking at looking at uh uh COD World War Two. The supply crates are in there, and then I was like, and I was in the very beginning, they didn't have points system in the very beginning of that game. Now they do. <laughs> COD points you buy with real money, but like you're only getting cosmetics. Yeah, you might get a heroic gun that gets you like 10% more experience. whoop de doo You can have that all you want, I'll probably still beat you. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't change the core gameplay. And if people want to do that, they want to spend their money on that, that's that's totally fine. I'm never I'm not gonna stop them. It's just when my game is locked away by that. Yeah. Yeah. And that's when that, that's when that's when the problem. So I think, you know, a lot of people criticized um uh, Shadow of War because a lot you know some of the gameplay elements of like taking fortresses and like getting a better army you could get through loot boxes it's like oh I can just pay and do this rather than be like in order to like you know grind out and do it normally it would take forever to the point where like oh god I might as well spend five dollars it's gonna take me three days to do it, you know you want games to be fun you want to be you know grinding is a part of gaming but like you don't want it to just be purely a grind you want right. it to be fun Right. So I think we'll see a balance. I think it will be an option, but it won't be restrictive. Because I think they'll find that balance because they're seeing because they they've 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 found I hope you know they've seen where how bad it can be. EA made a mistake. It, it backlashed hard. And now it's like, okay, we've reached the barrier of how far they can push it. Yeah. And now it's like, okay, let's back up a little bit. Yeah. yeah. I think there's a happy medium there because it is here to stay. It's not going anywhere. Right. I'm just interested to see to I'm just interested what the next revolutionary kind of change in gaming will be. Not necessarily you know, just from consoles yeah, or but just like format. I don't know. Well, it's going to be interesting. You know, I think like, you know, we we saw like with MMOs who forever operate off a subscription-based model, $15 a month yeah. to play the game because it just it took so much to manage those games. And those like in World of Warcraft is the only MMO currently um, who could actually justify a fifteen dollar a month price tag? Um, uh. Because there's just <laughs> no. But honestly, dude, because like there's so much in that game, and it's so, so popular. Have you ever you heard of the game Eve Online? <laughs> yes, I have. I've yeah. played it a little bit. Okay, here I have not. I, I only played like two minutes of it, but I mean, some of the stories I hear about that game is maybe the space version of World of Warcraft. Maybe not as large for sure, but I don't know. Eve's been around a really long time, but that was always free to play because I didn't have to pay for it when I played. No, you do need a subscription now because I was thinking of you getting do? into it, but I'm like, I don't mm. know if I want to pay a subscription. <laughs> the only MMO that I would get into again, right now, um, there's there's like there's two of them that I would do. I would do Star Wars: The Old Republic, which was a subscription base, but they went free to play. But they've adapted themselves to be releasing content on a consistent basis in like chapters and. And, and free to the members. They do do bigger expansions sometimes where it's like, hey, but if you're a subscriber, you get it for free. Yep. If not, it's like 20 bucks, but you do you do get like all these. So it's keeping people consistently playing each and every month almost. It's like, oh, there's something new, something new, something new, something new. So, and when you're doing that, people are probably gonna be more likely to, to, to spend money on like on a cosmetic or something like that because they're able to still play the game and that model has been successful for them. They've been able to turn a profit on that on that model with that game, and it's keeping it going wonderful. World of Warcraft, I would not have a problem paying $15, $15 a month. The last expansion got wonderful reviews. It did really well. This next expansion looks really good, and there's also so much to do with the previous expansions in terms of story, raids, dungeons. There's so, so many levels and progression that I don't mind paying $15 for that game. So if you want to play an MMO, I will totally play one or two with you. If you and I want to jump in and do a and I'm, do a, a perspective on that. I played a little you know? bit of uh, Star Trek Online in my day. <laughs> I remember that. that yeah, I remember playing that. That one was cool. That was fun. It was I just it. It had a shitty day. That, that game just lacked. I haven't played it in a while. I'm sure they've made a bunch of changes. <laughs> I'll have to download it again and a little around Well, with the it. other thing with the, you know, the MMO is that conversation is that so many MMOs are coming out. It's like you can't, you can't. Not every, you can't play all these MMOs. MMOs take so much time. It's almost like you're, that, that, that's, the, that's what you play unless well, you have of, tons of time. It's a lot of grinding, too. Yeah, but it's fun. Like, World of Warcraft oh, yeah. is fun. The dungeons are fun. The, the PvP is fun. The raids are fun. You know, it, like that, that was a game that I truly had fun. 
I, I'm sure I it is. And... I will never play it, though, because I don't want to get sucked in. <laughs> Dude, honestly, like, I, I, I recommend you have, I know you have Battle.net. You can play for free up to level 20. Try it. Just give it a try. Uh, I don't know. Completely I'll, free. I'll think about it. Maybe if I go through another <laughs> knee surgery and I'm out for a couple months and <laughs> I'll pick it up. So, yeah. Yeah, I have a few. I have friends who played it who got like really sucked in, uh, but that's World of Warcraft is a whole other podcast in itself. We could do it. Maybe yeah, we'll maybe after my we'll surgery, and I'll later. have some insight. Yeah, we'll do that one later. Cool. <laughs> All right. Well, this is a really big topic, and this is the topic that will continue to evolve. As the game come out, you know, I'll be curious to see what they're gonna do. You know, I'll be curious to see what comes out at E3. We'll talk about E3 later, but um. We'll go ahead and, and and wrap it up with this, guys. If you liked what you've heard today, definitely comment on where you think gaming is going. You know, games that you, you know, just your opinion on DLC and microtransactions, loot boxes, the whole the whole yard, uh, nine yards. Feel free to uh, comment on that. Let us know what you think. Let us know if you disagree. It's totally fine. Uh, if you like the videos, you want to see more stuff. Again, we're launching this channel. Uh, hit the subscribe button, and we'll talk to you guys again soon. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's always fun and. Uh... We'll see you guys next time. All righty. Ruse, I'll talk to you later. Yeah, sounds good. See you, man.